three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 greatest SpongeBob SquarePants running gags. Chocolate! 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 For this list, we'll be looking at the best recurring jokes that rose from Bikini Bottom and became classic bits of comedy. What's your favorite SpongeBob running gag? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Sandy's Sayings I'm sick. Can you escort me to the doctors? Oh, sure, SpongeBob. I'll be over there faster than a barefoot jackrabbit on a hot, greasy griddle in the middle of August with yeah, a okay, Sandy, thanks. If you had to guess which SpongeBob character said that someone looked madder than a rattlesnake in a room full of rocking chairs, we bet you point to a certain squirrel. Sandy brings her quirky and often long-winded turns of phrases to a variety of situations. While they're always funny to listen to, the gag gets more hilarious when people call her out. I'll be over there faster than a barefoot jackrabbit on a hike! Oh yeah, yeah, the rabbit! Don't bother, Sandy! Sandy's Texan sayings are some of the most memorable lines on this very quotable show. But before you try to repeat them to her, we just want to remind you that she's not a fan of people making fun of her state. Yeehaw! You look madder than fried egg on a neck bone! <laughs> Don't even attempt a Texas saying! Sorry. Number 19. A Falling Star while this recurring physical joke reached its peak way back in season one, it definitely deserves time in the spotlight. The setup was always the same. When Patrick wanted to greet his neighbors from the comfort of his home, he'd stick to the bottom of his rock. But he'd always forget how to cling and faceplant into the ground. Good morning. This simple bit of physical comedy never failed to put a smile on our faces. As the show went on, this particular Patrickism was swapped out in favor of more sophisticated boulder bits. However, we'll never forget the first few times we saw this star fall. Hey, SpongeBob, don't start without me! Number 18. Plankton's College Career When I discover your formula for Krabby Patties, I'll run you out of business! I went to college! This tiny evil genius can't help but brag about his big brain at every chance he gets. Plankton particularly likes to remind everyone that he's reached a certain educational milestone. Since this joke is aimed at older audiences, it has only gotten better over time. The reason we love Plankton's college callouts so much is that they often come at unexpected times. And now for my very elaborate and college-educated plan. It doesn't matter if he's furious, frustrated, or feeling sad. If there's a way to work college into the conversation, Plankton will find it. He honestly deserves an honorary degree in running gags for constantly cracking us up with this bit. Sorry, Dad, I'd love to, but I'm leaving for college. I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> Number 17. SpongeBob's Strange Body Throughout the run of the series, the protagonist has proven that he can do a bunch of unique things with his spongy physiology. However, the trait that has been most often used for comedy is SpongeBob's ability to detach and regrow parts of his body at will. He has no problem literally lending a friend a hand if they need it. Uh, Patrick, that's not the back scratcher, that's my arm. Oh. Sorry. And whenever SpongeBob gets grievously injured, he shakes off the blow and keeps going. The writers have gotten really creative with how many limbs he can generate in one shot. Since this gag has so many possibilities and variations, the punchline is always slightly different. We can never predict how SpongeBob will use that unique body of his to make us laugh. He cut off his own hand by mistake. You mean like this? Or like this? Or this? Or this? But what about this? Number 16. The animated characters get real. Whenever SpongeBob or his friends decide to visit the surface world, there's a chance that they'll look a lot different than we're used to. Their cartoony bodies and animated expressions have been swapped out in favor of more realistic versions of the characters. At the same time, the show keeps the voice acting intact as the sea creatures explore the land. This is pretty easy. I may keep a second rock up here. Once you get your land legs, it's not so bad. We're the masters of land and sea. 
Admittedly, the franchise has sidestepped this gag whenever they prefer to see the animated characters. That exception to the rule has led to memorable occasions where animated and realistic characters share the screen. It's been fun watching Bikini Bottom residents take full advantage of real-world visuals whenever they can. Number 15. Chocolate. It only took a single episode for this gag to become legendary among fans. While Patrick and SpongeBob are out selling candy, they meet someone who is very vocal about chocolate. Did you say chocolate? Yes, sir! With or without nuts. Chocolate? Chocolate! 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 This hyperactive fish follows them around for the rest of the episode while screaming just one word. Although he initially terrifies the duo, his hilariously over-the-top vocals leave us in stitches each time he suddenly reappears. Chocolate! This brilliant running gag ends with the fantastic reveal that he was just such a big fan that he couldn't contain his manic energy. As much as we love this character for making us laugh, we are seriously worried about his future dental bills. Finally! I've been trying to catch you boys all day! Now that I've got you right where I want you, I'd like to buy all your chocolate. Number 14. Plankton Gets Squashed Closer. Not that close! Ah! You blasted barnacle head! If this Bikini Bottom resident wasn't so villainous, we might actually feel bad that he's constantly subjected to this recurring joke. Since Plankton is already so close to the ground, his enemies often deal with him by stepping on his small body. This gag definitely works well when his larger opponent is mad at him. However, the best Plankton squashes occur when his bigger foe does it by accident. There are several occasions in the series where one of his speeches or plans is cut short simply because someone decided to take a step. At this point, we're not sure why Plankton is much of a problem at all. The characters all know the funniest and most surefire way to stomp out his evil plots. And this is Plankton, who's always trying to steal the Krabby Patty. So, we step on him! Ouch! Try it, everyone, it's fun! Number 13. Disgusting Details since SpongeBob's world often looks cute and clean, it always catches us off guard when we're suddenly subjected to gross artwork. This joke usually tasks the artist to zoom in uncomfortably close to a character or object so we can take in all the gross details. What are you doing with my beautiful patty? Beautiful, huh? How beautiful do you think this is? <laughs> It, Squidward. There's also plenty of occasions where the ugly artwork will also appear in wider shots. Admittedly, there were times where the show pushed the gag so far that fans legitimately wanted to turn away. The mixed reaction to the Splinter episode served as a notable example of how divisive the joke can be. Fortunately, for every instance where fans are grossed out, there are three more times where the odd artwork greatly enhanced a scene. <laughs> Number 12. Squidward's Struggling Art Career Longtime fans know that Krusty Krab's cashier wants nothing more than to make a living as a famous artist. Unfortunately, numerous creatures under the sea disagree with him. Yeah, uh, we're with a pet hospital down the street, and I understand you have a dying animal on the premises. Multiple Squidward performances have ended with audience members rebelling or walking out. It doesn't matter whether he's singing, dancing, or painting. The other fish in the sea just tend to reject whatever he tries. And don't even get us started on how much Bikini Bottom loathes his infamous clarinet. Admittedly, Squidward actually does have a few fans and moments of artistic brilliance. However, it's much more common and a whole lot funnier whenever characters absolutely bash his art. You bottom feeders! You don't even know talent! No, no talent! No talent! No talent! Number 11. Mr. Krabs and his big, greedy claws. Arr. 
Money, 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 money. 10, 20, 30, 40. Did you know that the owner of the Krusty Krab really likes money? If you answered no, then we're not sure that you've ever seen an episode of the show. It feels like we're reminded once an episode that Mr. Krabs is absolutely obsessed with cold and probably wet cash. His greed constantly pushes him to take extreme measures to preserve every single penny that he earns. Additionally, Mr. Krabs loves money so much that he was even willing to marry a talking pile of cash that was secretly plankton in disguise. The show constantly finds new ways to capitalize on the businessman's greedy character trait in each and every installment. By sticking with this gag, the audience gets constantly rewarded with comedy gold. If I could talk to money, and it could talk to me, we'd always be the best of friends for all eternity. Number 10. Meow. This snail's got such a way with words. Snails have been classified as the felines of the sea, so naturally, Gary's dialogue mostly consists of one word. <coughs> While initially making small kitten noises during the show's early seasons, as time progressed and he became a much more prominent character, Gary soon began meowing in near full sentences. <coughs> What makes this even funnier is that aside from SpongeBob, nobody fully knows what Gary's actually saying. He could be offering words of wisdom or giving SpongeBob attitude. We may never know, and we're not sure if we're ready to find out. Bring that ladder back this instant! I am really not amused, mister. You are going to take a bath and you are going to get clean right now! I am so the boss of you! Number 9. Old Man Jenkins what? It's old man Jenkins in his jalopy. <gasps> Howdy, Mrs. K! Of all the citizens of Bikini Bottom, very few have been name-dropped as much as old man Jenkins. What makes this mysterious elderly fish so interesting is that he's been seen in many different shapes and sizes. One day he could be a wide guy with a noisy jalopy, the next day he could be a bluefish eaten by a seahorse, or even an angry farmer who's bitter towards city folk and their flying machines. I knew no good would come from city folk and their flying machines! In recent years, this particular gag has slowed down, since the creators finally settled on Old Man Jenkins' design, a skinny green fish with overalls whose lights aren't always on upstairs. Old Man Jenkins? Huh? I'm not Old Man Jenkins anymore. I'm King Neptune. Number 8. Mrs. Puff Inflating They don't call her Mrs. Puff for nothing. Whenever involved in an emotionally stressful situation, she rapidly inflates like an oversized balloon. Oh, SpongeBob! Why? On the one hand, it's sad to see how stressful Mrs. Puff's life has become thanks to SpongeBob. It's gotten to the point where she actually has a criminal record. But I don't belong here! It's all a big mistake! However, it's hard not to chuckle at how she's her own personal airbag, made even more fitting by the fact that she's a pufferfish. But Mrs. Puff better be careful not to get too worked up, or she just might pop. Literally. No, SpongeBob! Don't touch the no! Number 7. Explosions <laughs> Did we mention that the show is an explosive success? Turns out that it's also a literal statement since explosions are a common occurrence in Bikini Bottom. Sometimes they'll happen when someone comes crashing down, or when they've eaten too many Krabby Patties. And then there are times all it takes is a light tap and the whole place goes up in smoke. Hey guys, I finished that. Of course, the best kinds of explosions are the ones that happen for no actual reason, which in turn increases the cartoony, zany charm that we love about this absorbent show, so long as we don't get caught in the crossfire. I can't find the coin slot! Here it is! <laughs> Number 6. 
time cards. One extremely annoying shift later. Need a hilarious method of emphasizing how much time has passed in an episode? The series excels at this with its own colorful, handy dandy time cards, conveniently read aloud by the series' French narrator. It doesn't matter how much time has passed a few hours, a couple of days, or even nearly 2,000 years. It could even take so long that they need a new narrator. 2,000 years later. What makes this gag even funnier is when the cards display an absurd or silly saying that really shows off how painfully long something can take. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Here's to hoping that they don't run out of these cards as there is no shortage of hilarity as time passes. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Number five, Plankton's constant failures. A flashy patty pirate. This is no ghost. This is Plankton stealing me booty. Hear me, crabs. When I discover your formula for Krabby Patties, I'll run you out of business. For years, Plankton has tried and failed to steal the secret formula to Mr. Krabs' world famous Krabby Patties. There's no level that Plankton won't stoop to, pun intended, to achieve this goal. His schemes range from ingenious and conniving to harebrained and full of holes. Despite him putting his best foot forward, it always ends in failure either because of his own arrogance or because he's been outsmarted by Mr. Krabs. And it usually ends with him being launched all the way back to the chum bucket. Allow me to do the honors. Eh, yeah! Ah! It's really for the best that Plankton never finds out the secret formula, or it'll spell certain doom not only for the Krusty Krab, but for all of Bikini Bottom. And the secret formula is one bottle of molting lotion, take passport photo, get new safe travel size. This isn't the secret formula, it's a to do list! Yeah! Number four, evil! Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were once the greatest superheroes under the sea. However, decades of crime fighting have taken their toll on the duo, especially the former. In any given situation, he will panickedly scream the word evil. Sometimes he'll even shout it out if he hears someone say it. But you can't retire. There's evil afoot. The way his voice cracks whenever he screams the line is just too priceless. And late actor Ernest Borgnine owned it in a way that his character's stand-in actors could only dream of. We've got to keep up our strength for the fight against evil! We wouldn't exactly classify laughing at a senile old man as appropriate, but the way the show sells it with both his voice and overall reaction is comedy gold. Oh, but forget you people. I say if you're not going to give me any respect as a hero, then maybe you'll give me respect as a villain. A villain who is evil. Number three, Squidward's annoying neighbors. By the all seeing eye, we are worthy. We are not. What are you two idiots doing? How did Squidward ever get surrounded by such crazy neighbors? Nearly every day, this grumpy cephalopod finds himself reluctantly dealing with SpongeBob and Patrick's shenanigans. They could be disturbing his peace and quiet with their playtime, show up at his house uninvited, or even worse, they could end up destroying his personal property, with Squidward getting hurt in the process. Hey, pal. Rematch next Saturday? Rain or shine, SpongeBob. Rain or shine. No matter how hard he tries, he can't seem to get rid of them or keep them quiet. And any attempt to do so always makes things worse. How? Intruder alert! Intruder alert! What's the matter with you? No threat detected. Oh, you infernal contraption! I'm gonna ship you off to the scrap heap you came from! Threat detected. To their credit, our favorite knuckleheads don't usually try to ruin Squidward's day on purpose, but it's hard to ignore them when they have a tendency to cause so much chaos. Number two, SpongeBob failing his boating test. 
SpongeBob has taken his driving test more times than anyone in history, and it always ends in failure. I don't know why, Gary. I don't know. I'm tired of failing that boating test. I've already taken it 37 times. No matter how confident and optimistic he may be, he's a reckless disaster behind the wheel, much to the agony of poor Mrs. Puff. I'm sorry, Mrs. Puff. I'm sorry. The wheel, SpongeBob. The wheel. Cheating. I'm a cheater. Even if there's a slight chance of him finally earning his coveted license, it's yanked away by the end of the episode. He can't even get his license in his dreams. Mrs. Puff, look! I finally got my driver's license! Not even in your dreams, Mr. Squarepants! No! It could be easier to just give SpongeBob a license just to end the cycle, but that would only spell a greater doom for Bikini Bottom. Plus, we'd lose the chaotic yet hilarious dynamic between SpongeBob and Mrs. Puff. So perhaps it's for the best that SpongeBob's quest is a fruitless endeavor. I'll take that. SpongeBob! I'll get you for this! I'll get you! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. My Leg Taking our number one spot is the Wilhelm scream of Nickelodeon. Whenever there's pandemonium or destructive chaos in Bikini Bottom, you're almost always guaranteed to hear the painful cry of my leg in the mix of it all. What would this town do without you, SpongeBob? Oh, my leg! My leg! One recycled soundbite used throughout the first few seasons blossomed into one of the funniest catchphrases of the series, brought to life by series writer and voice actor Doug Lawrence. I see you, Sam. There have been several variations of the line, but the hilarious, agonizing context is what makes this gag so iconic. Seriously, you know a throwaway line is popular enough when they make an entire episode as an homage to the joke. Why are you following my leg? Fred, you have to listen to me. Your leg is in constant danger. Isn't that so, Patrick? I think I hurt my leg. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.